Hello and welcome to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host Manny Maradiega live today on June the 7th to go through another round of NFL stories with you guys today. A special edition once again on today's episode. The first topic we'll talk about is the wide receiver deal. It's just going over and having a discussion on who got some extensions this offseason and who could be in line to receive a couple more. And also looking at the quarterback situation similarly to the wide receivers. Who's in line for an extension and what sort of number could be in line for them. Plus some more rankings across the divisions in the NFL. This time switching over to the running backs and going through the NFC North division. Vikings. Bears, Packers, and the Lions all coming up on today's show, plus a lot more. Please remember to like, follow, and subscribe to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. And also, as a reminder, if you have any questions or comments you want to make, use the tip and donations link, gsmcpodcast.net, that you see on your screen. By using that, I'm able to see your comment or question and get your guys' thoughts on anything I say or on any of the topics discussed on today's show. It's a massive help for the network, so if you would, please use the tip and donations link with any of your questions or comments. But like I mentioned, it is a special edition because we got two guests on today's show. I'm bringing them on the screen now. I got the host of the GSMC Football Podcast in Kenneth, and also Emran making his first appearance on my show the host of the GSMC Soccer Podcast as well. We're going to go over a few topics, guys. But first, how are you guys doing today? Doing well. Doing well. I'm doing great, Manny. Perfect, perfect. So, yeah, we're just going to get right into it. Uh, Talking about the wide receivers first on hand with a lot of extensions going down so far. Eight receivers have been handed new extensions this offseason. Just a couple of names to throw out there. Justin Jefferson, Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown, Amon Ross St. Brown. A lot of guys have gone extensions and got, and have gone paid pretty well so far um, just based on everything they, they got this offseason. So I just want to get your guys' initial thoughts first off. I'll start with you, Emran. Um, from the extensions that have been given out so far this year, who do you think, which one of these deals sort of surprised you the most, the most when you heard it uh, first be announced? Hmm. I would, uh, none of them have been hugely surprising to me. I think the one that's, um, the one I least expected, I am a Niner fan, was the Polis- uh, I said Polis- the McCaffrey one, the Christian McCaffrey one, and the fact, not because of the money that he's owed, but because of, you know, the fact that we still haven't re-signed uh, Brandon Ayuk, the main storyline of this offseason. We haven't really dealt with that situation. We don't know exactly what the wide receiver outlook is for the team long term. When you look at the fact that we drafted Ricky Pearsall and you thought maybe that's, you know, that's a sign that at least Jawan Jennings is gone. But then a few days ago before that, we actually re-signed him. So interested on that. And obviously, you know, 19 million a year for a running back at 28, you would seem that's a lot. But when you look in the fact that a guy like T Higgins, he's probably going to get or he's going he's to have what, 25, 26, 27 million dollar deal. That's his value. You know, McCaffrey for nineteen million looks like a bargain. Kenneth, Kenneth, anyone that uh surprised you? Maybe just if they re-signed or how much money they got. Maybe. I guess uh, because I I covered it was a Nico Collins deal. Um, I that one I think caught me a little bit by surprise. Not to say that he doesn't deserve to get paid. I'm just saying that I didn't expect him to get an extension, and he had a great year this past well last season, and. Yeah, he was kind of one of those guys that you really didn't hear about that much because, you know, the Texans were kind of, you know, looking for that next quarterback. I mean, he was playing with Davis Mills and and Tyrod Taylor. And then the Texans went out and they got C.J. Stroud and they really formed a strong connection. And I'm really excited to see how they're able to build on that in 2024. And you got Stefan Diggs now in the fold and, of course, Tank Dell as well going into his second year. So I'm excited to, about the Texans, you know, as a whole with their offense. So that's probably one deal that I would say I was maybe a little bit surprised, but he definitely deserved it after the season that he had. And then also I wanted to bring up Amon Ross St. Brown as well. Uh, One of the more underrated receivers I would say in the NFL. And I think the lions, they did a great job signing him long-term signing Penny Sewell to an extension on the offensive line. And of course, getting Jared Goff paid too recently. Um, That's another deal I would, uh, 
I would say I was I was happy to see as well. Yeah, I mean, those, those are two good ones. Uh, the Nico Collins one especially just because um, I felt like he was going to happen later in the season. But also just for me, um, looking at the one A.J. Brown got, again, not to say that he didn't deserve it because he's been phenomenal for the Eagles, but um, it just happened so quick. I didn't hear anything about it leading up to the draft, and then it just happened, I think, on the first night of the of the NFL draft, and he became the highest paid wide receiver for the time being, obviously until Justin Jefferson got his, and now he's set for a longer period with the Vikings. So that sort of leads into my next question. I'll go back to, uh, to Emron here. You know, Emron, which team do you think sort of, I guess benefited the most from extending their uh, wide receivers now up to this point. Maybe some teams doing it quicker than others, maybe saving a few bucks here and there. You know, what are your thoughts on who maybe benefited the most by re-signing their uh, their wide receivers? I think actually he said Nico Collins. I think Nico and Texans long-term are going to be the ones that benefit the most because I feel like what they signed for Nico Collins at the rate – you know, it's only going to go up and, you know, if they waited like, you know, the Niners are currently doing with Ayuk or the Vikings did with Jefferson, if they waited till that last year, I think, you know, and Nico Collins ended up having another good year. I think he would have definitely broke the bank, uh, like broke the double bank. So I think long term wise now, it seems like the Texans, you know, why do you settle in early? That's what it seems like at this point. But I think they were very clever in the way that they did it with not waiting because you see, you know, a lot of these teams, they end up getting melted by these teams when it comes to or by these agents when it comes to waiting till the last minute. All it does is keep driving, drive, you know, the market value, how that works, which I don't understand it. But in the NFL, there's, you know, the, any any level of any star level type of player, they always go um get the next deal, the next highest deal, even if they're not at that level yet. But um, so I think the Texans long term are really going to benefit after getting it done early. How about you, Kenneth? Who do you think uh, benefited the most by extending their wide receivers maybe earlier than a lot of teams maybe? Yeah, so, and also to uh, piggyback off of what Emron said with Nico Collins, the other thing too is with Stefan Diggs, he might just be there for one year and he might leave. So I guess, that you know, that also adds to the importance of, you know, getting one of your receivers extended. I would also, so I would I would bring up Justin Jefferson. I think that is very important because right now the Vikings – you have a young quarterback, and I just talked about him on the show today. I kind of I was talking about the uh, the Vikings depth chart, and there it, it seems like they're taking a patient approach with JJ McCarthy. And right now, I think they have him listed as the quarterback three, which we shouldn't take. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Um, you know, it's I, I'm not really going to overreact over it. I mean, they talk about him struggling in practice. I mean, we're seeing that with Caleb Williams too. So, but it's not a big deal. Um, but I think Justin Jefferson getting him locked up long term, that's huge. It's arguably the best wide receiver in the game. And he talked about how, you know, he wants to take on that mentorship role, you know, and kind of help JJ McCarthy along here. And I, I think that's great knowing that you have arguably the best receiver in your corner to give you confidence. So I think that's important. And they have a decent number two wide receiver in Addison. I think he he seems like he's gonna be a good player. But you want the, the Vikings wanted to get this done with Justin Jefferson and he could definitely help JJ McCarthy along when he eventually does take over as the starter. Cause it seems like right now, Sam Darnold is probably going to start the year and we'll see if JJ McCarthy plays at all. But I would say Justin Jefferson. Yeah. I, I like that, uh, that choice there because it sort of leads into my next question, a little bit focusing in on CD lamb and the, these, this next wave of wide receivers that could get paid CD lamb, Potentially Jamar Chase, T. Higgins on the franchise tag, and also Brandon Ayuk there as well. Um, I guess simplest question, just first off, who do you guys think, I'll go back to Emron here, who do you think will be the next wide receiver to get paid out of those four that I mentioned there? Ayuk, T. Higgins, Jamar Chase, and uh, C.D. Lamb there. Um, I think it has to be Ayuk with the fact that he is holding out. He is the one out of the four giving the most, you know, and we're giving the most pressure. Now, the C.D. Lamb situation is interesting. Now, that's one also, you know, I think those are the top two. But, you know, they also have, you know, they have other worries, major worries in Dallas to worry about when it comes to, you know, Dak and Micah Parsons. I think the uh, level of importance with the Niners re-signing Brendan Ayuk is a little bit of a higher priority right now than maybe with the Cowboys, even though they're both 
holding out. I think as far as T. Higgins and Jamar Chase, I don't think Bengals will give T. Higgins. I think T. Higgins will be another a wide receiver for another team eventually. Um, I don't think he'll get that deal from Cincinnati. And I think Jamar Chase will, you know, he'll get resigned, but the level of urgency with Brandon Ayuk and CD Lamb is far higher than with Jamar Chase. And Kenneth, same question, but also just an additional topic. Do you think if and when um, CD Lamb gets extended, do you think he could have a chance to reset the market, or do you think they'll leave it alone there with Justin Jefferson? Because I know it's something we did bring up in the production meeting, because, I, I mean, the Cowboys, they were kind of waiting to see what kind of contract Justin Jefferson would get. And... Yeah, I don't really know. It's it's tough to say. Um, CD Lamb's coming off of his best season, so if he does reset the market, that doesn't surprise me. Um, but yeah, it's tough. It's tough to say. I, I'm not really sure. Um, Bad, oh yeah, go ahead, Emron. Yeah, what's up? I think the Cowboys have completely botched the CD Lamb situation exactly the same way they botched the Dak situation a few years ago. You know, they had a chance to give Dak a much friendlier deal than what they did. They decided to bet against their quarterback. Now they're sitting here saying they wanted, like, if that's what their mindset was, of wanting to wait to see how much Jefferson was getting, I think that's beyond crazy. I'm not even using the word that I was going to use, but I hope y'all know what I was trying to say. That's beyond crazy to me because C.D. Lamb put up a 1,900 yard receiver. He has every right to say, oh, I want to match whatever the top wide receiver is making. The way that this, the way, yeah, I, I agree. Work. I agree. I agree 100%. The really and I think, I think ultimately, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I think CD is safe. Like he's going to be with the Cowboys. I think Dak is gone. I, I think he's going elsewhere, but that that's just me. And then Micah Parsons, I know he's looking for a new deal. That's more down the line. But yeah, I think out of those three guys, Dak Prescott's probably gone. Yeah, I'd agree with that. It just um, it is in a weird situation, just because, um, like you mentioned, Kenneth C D is coming off of his best year, and from a team standpoint, you know, you want to obviously keep him because if you were to lose C D, I don't think they will, but just say that could be a possibility. Then you really don't have too many options because you let go of Michael Gallup. You have Jalen Tolbert there, but he's not really um somebody proven yet. You have Brandon Cooks also, but you need as many playmakers on this team because then at the end of the day, if Dak is supposed to get you know up to like sixty or fifty five million dollars or fifty million dollars, then you might not be able to keep him also and still build a competitive team. So they're like Emran said in a very tough situation. Um team-wise there to stay competitive but the last question I'll ask you guys before we go into a break is um, a little bit something that Emran touched on before you know these wide receivers getting these massive deals um, I'll start with you again Emran do you think this is something that's beneficial for the NFL getting the wide receivers specifically these massive deals or do you, or do you think maybe another position group deserves to be paid a little bit more friendlier um, than they are currently being paid for the for the NFL, can you, uh, what do you mean by the NFL? Like in general, like is this smart for the wide receivers to be like paid this much in terms of? Okay. Yeah, I mean like uh, like you mentioned Christian McCaffrey before. Like running okay. backs are barely paid anything compared to wide receivers. And I don't know how you guys maybe view how much a running back value is compared to a wide receiver on a team. Do you think it's fair, I guess, to rephrase the question a little bit that wide receivers are getting paid this much? compared to, I don't know, running back or offensive lineman who really um, dictate a lot of how your offense looks. Do you think that's fair? Uh, do you think that's the way it should go here in the NFL? Well, no, it's not fair at all. I mean, I mean, I think football is the only sport that gets it wrong when it comes to paying position groups. I think in other sports, they pay the player, which I think that should be the right way to go. But uh, yeah, no, absolutely. Wide receivers don't get paid, don't deserve to get paid almost double the salary of a, of, of a running back at same competence. Running backs are the ones that get hit on a daily basis. They're the ones that actually have shorter careers because because of the amount of, you know, physicality that comes with that position. So if anything, they should be the ones that pay more. I agree with paying with the players, but definitely I don't agree with how it is. But at the end of the day, the market dictates the value. And it seems like this day and age, you know, it wasn't like this always, you know, running backs used to be the pick, of, you know, the main part of the market. But now in this you know, West Coast high-flying offense we live in, you know, you need these 
superstar type receivers to make it easier for the quarterback. You know, it, it absolutely it's not fair and it's not right, but it, again, the market di dictates how how players are paid. Kenneth, what do you think here? Yeah, I don't really have much to add, but I, I, I mean, for me, it also has to, I feel like the, the individual player as well. Um, I think that's big because I mean, Christian McCaffrey, like we talked about that as well in the production meeting too, about how much money he got. And for me, it wasn't surprising because I think he's the best running back in the NFL and he could do so many different things. And I think he's in a great situation with the 49ers. I think part of the reason why he got hurt is because of the situation that he was in in Carolina. I think he's in a much better situation with the 49ers. They're a well-run organization. And I think, you know, that has part to do with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's money's going to keep going up. And uh, it's not just in football, but it's in other sports as well. I mean, you, you see it, like, especially like in baseball, the contracts that they get in baseball too. Um but obviously, it's different because there's a salary cap in football. There's just not a salary cap in in baseball. But yeah, that's that's really my my thoughts on it. Yeah, I'm probably with you guys in the same boat there. But that's probably the end of that segment. We'll put a pin in that, and then when we come back after the break, we'll talk some more similarly around contracts this time around. Some of the quarterbacks that could get paid potentially during the rest of this offseason. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs> 